This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Earlier this year, I designed, built, and fired an O-class rocket motor named Simplex. I learned so much throughout this whole build, which is why I made six previous videos covering the whole process as much as possible. This is the seventh and final video where we're going to fire the motor, see how it did, and talk about next steps. So let's get started. Simplex means simple in Latin, and it describes my goals with this project. Keep it simple and learn as we go. Before we fire this motor though, let's do a little recap on how it was designed and fit and... Where's that music coming from? Hey kid! Holy sh**! Wanna build a rocket motor? Wait, no, 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 no. What's, what's happening? There are several parts you need to build a rocket motor. A nozzle and a closure and an insulator. You shove them in a case and then you fill it up with sludge. Don't eat the sludge. It looks tasty. The forward closure's made of 60, 60, one T6. It gets an O-ring, then another, then a third. In case one splits, tap the hole for the transducers. That's how you build a rocket motor. Now it's time to make a nozzle and that comes in several parts A graphite throat, a carrier, a whole lot of heart These parts go on a lathe and then we make a lot of dust Don't breathe the dust I love my lungs These pieces go together and you seal them with ketchup Just kidding, it's not ketchup, it's room temperature vulcanizing silicone Now the nozzle part is over that's how you build a rocket motor. And now it's time yeah. to make the sludge. All right. Delicious sludge. Don't eat the sludge. It's not worth you it. Take the HGPP, IDP, aluminum, and mix, and that the perchlorates. Yum. Now MDI to cure the mix. And then you vacuum degas all the bubbles till the sludge gets thick. And when you're ready, pack the tube with 40 pounds of cookie dough. And then you wait a bit. Just a sec, finally remove the core, and that's how you build a rocket motor. Are we, can we be done? No, now there's one more step that's left before we see if this thing works. We've got to build a test end and then work out all the quirks. We'll fill this thing with water and then pressurize it hard. 69 bars. Nice. The motor passed a hydro test, so now let's light the match. But first we'll get it polished to ensure this thing looks snatched. And don't forget the paint, good sir, cause that's how you build a rocket motor. We're firing this motor at the Friends of Amateur Rocketry test site in the Mojave Desert, which is where I fly most of my rockets these days. FAR is one of the best resources for rocketry in the country, and they opened it a little bit early for me to do this static fire test, so thanks to the folks there. Once we got the test stand set up and the igniter loaded into the motor, we stood the motor up in the test stand. For larger motors, we're gonna need a smoother way to do this. A 60 pound motor is fine with two people, but the Space Shot motors are 100 pounds in propellant alone. I also set up a Patreon live stream so the folks who financially support the project could witness whether the last three months of hard work would pay off or go up in a ball of fire. Once the cameras were rolling, the last step was to use that remote arming feature to flip the switch and check for continuity in the igniter. All right, we're gonna go ahead and arm the test stand. We have continuity on channel one. And we're starting the count. Count is beginning. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, fire.
I'll be real with you, I expected this motor to blow up. I didn't expect it to go as well as it did. This is my first time building a solid rocket motor, and although I got lots of help from friends along the way, I just didn't think it would go this well. Even with the low chamber pressure we had, there were so many question marks in my mind as to what would work and what wouldn't. Using Onshape, I want to take a look at some of the parts that I expected not to work. So this graphite nozzle here had no business working at all. I cracked it because I danced on top of it. I also put water in there during the hydrostatic tests and the water like interstitiates into the graphite. And if you don't get that water out, it can crack the graphite. I have no idea how I didn't get bit for that. Up at the top of the motor here, this HEI design or head end ignition was totally untested. The setup with these two O-rings means there's a solid possibility for gas in between the forward closure and the HEI bolt that could just burn away the O-rings. I did my best to seal it with phenolic and a little bit of grease, but that's still a point that I'm a little worried about for the future. Back down at the nozzle, I was worried about the fit between the liner and the nozzle, which is actually supposed to be kind of loose. We don't want to seal pressure around there. I I knew intuitively that it made sense to not seal anything there and let the hot gas pass through so that it could pressurize the case first, but it just felt spooky. And you can see the scarring on the outside of the liner and the inside of the case when we pulled this thing apart. That scarring is actually like normal and intended and it's what we want to see. And apart from the design things, we royally mixed up that propellant mixing process. We ended up with a third of the motor having these massive voids in there and we had to cut it off in order to fix it. I'm so glad that this motor worked and that we were able to cobble something together out of it, even though time after time we mess something up or we hit a roadblock. I mean, this is like what engineering projects are all about. We have so many more motors to build before this space shot, and each one of them is gonna be built a lot faster than we did with Simplex. But before we talk about any of those things, let's look at the performance of the motor. The peak thrust here was almost 4,500 Newtons with a peak chamber pressure of 410 PSI or 2,800 kilopascals. The burn time was just under nine seconds long and over the course of it, our total impulse was 26,000 newton seconds. This puts us squarely in the O classification of rocket motor and factoring in average thrust, this motor would be classified as an O3100. So how did these specs compare with what we predicted for the motor? Well, once we had chopped off the finisil section because of those voids, we actually came pretty close to the simulation. We knew that we'd be burning a little harder because of all the micro voids inside the propellant and that's consistent with what we see here. The burn is a little bit harder and a little bit faster than the simulation, so that tracks. Something else I was concerned about here was the temperature of the aluminum case. The hotter that aluminum gets, the weaker it gets, and so good thermal insulation is important. I didn't have time to place thermocouples all over the motor, but a simple fix was to add these little temperature labels. They're irreversible, so they only log the max temperature they ever reach, but it's a great way to have just a little bit of extra data. I put several of these across the motor with different ranges. The area I was most concerned about was right here, which is where we intentionally let some of that hot gas slip between the thermal liner and case to keep the liner from holding pressure. And this area did see a good amount of heat, but it was mostly heat soaking in after the burn had finished. That area reached about 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 65 degrees Celsius. And you can tell that this is a particularly hot spot because near the forward closure and more in the middle of the motor, our maximum temperature was only about 130 degrees Fahrenheit or 54 Celsius. Closer to the O-rings on the nozzle, the case temperature was as low as 115 degrees Fahrenheit or 46 degrees Celsius. All of these are well within a safe range here. We're using 6061 aluminum here, which doesn't get spooky until it reaches about 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 150 degrees Celsius. So that's it for Simplex. If you watched the whole series, congratulations on learning a whole lot about solid rocket motors. And if you didn't, that's fine too. Let's talk about what's next. In the background, I've been working on developing a new rocket propellant. We used one called Cherry Limeade for Simplex, which works all right, but it doesn't pour that well. And because we're building larger motors, for the space shot, we can afford to go higher on our percentage of metals in the motor. The new propellant that I'm developing is called Risky Batman, and I'm quite excited about it. I'll talk a little bit more about it in a future video, but we have a couple of small static fires coming up, and so once we do those, we'll have a better idea of how it burns, and we can start building larger motors with it. The other thing I need to figure out on my journey to building a space shot motor is something called spin casting, and that's where instead of using that expensive phenolic material that's preformed into like a telescoping thing that goes into a tube for the liner, you take the case, you chemically etch the inside of the case, 
and then you spin the crap out of it, inject a bunch of sludge, and the sludge coats the inside of the case and that's your new liner. This is a difficult technique to get right, but if I can, it solves a lot of logistics problems and ultimately it makes the space shot cheaper. So it's gonna be a lot of work. I'm excited to develop that. I'm sure we'll have a video on it as well. Once Risky Batman is a good characterized propellant and we have the spin casting stuff done, it's time to start flying a bunch. We're gonna do a couple more six inch motors this year, as far as I can tell at least. And then after that, we start flying them. We basically are gonna fly parts of the second stage as like small rockets, and then we'll just keep extending it until it reaches the full length of the actual space shot second stage. These flights are going to test things like avionics, telemetry, cameras, recovery, and you didn't hear it from me, but like maybe a little bit of active control. We'll see. There are simpler ways to go to space than the route that I am pursuing. If you just want to get above 100 kilometers, that's great. You can do it with much smaller motors and a much more simple rocket. But here at BPS, we don't really uh, pick the simple path a lot of the time. Uh, the real reason though is that I want to fly like 34K cameras on this thing. I want to fly the like most well-documented space shot ever, which makes sense because it's like a YouTube channel. But I think there's a whole lot of imagery missing from rockets that are this scale and I'm excited excited to like pursue that path, but it does mean we need to build some big stuff. But before we do any of that stuff, we have to talk about the sponsor for today's video, which is Brilliant. If you've been on this side of YouTube for a while, you probably already know, but if you don't, Brilliant is an online learning platform designed around the idea of learning by doing. And that's my thing. That's what I do. That's my bread and butter. All this stuff is just learning by doing. Gaining experience by solving actual problems is way better than the traditional textbook approaches, at least in my opinion, and it's foundational to how Brilliant operates. It's one of the best ways to learn math and science interactively. And more than that, Brilliant helps you level up your skills so you can become the go-to person on your team or in your organization. It future-proofs you quite a bit. Brilliant offers a whole bunch of courses that you can start with today. I personally like their courses on probability and statistics, as well as some of the ones on more general math. If you want to try everything Brilliant has to offer, you can do that for free for a full 30 days. The best way to do that is by going to brilliant.org slash BPS space or clicking the link in the description. And the first 200 folks to use that link will get 20% off their annual subscription to Brilliant. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video and thanks to you for watching. I am so glad that we finally wrapped this series up and it's really satisfying to close out a project like this. If you want to stay in tune on what I'm doing like in real time, especially with this propellant event, development stuff. I've been continuing my little Patreon video series where every two weeks I publish a video that just talks for 10 to 20 minutes about what I did and has a bunch of footage in it as well. So if that's interesting to you, that stuff comes out on the main channel, but you can like follow along in real time through the Patreon and it helps fund the space shot. So thank you very much. My name is Joe Barnard. May your skies be blue and your winds be low. What am I doing with my hands? Bye.